But now to John Cleese, who eight years after the success of A Fish Called Wanda has reassembled the same cast, himself, Kevin Kline, Jamie Lee Curtis and Michael Palin, for a film called Fierce Creatures. A sequel then? No, not at all, nor even a prequel. Cleese describes it grandly as an equal, for it has nothing to do with Wanda, as we discovered when we visited the unit at Pinewood Studios. Kirsty Young reports. Last summer, John Cleese reassembled the Fish Called Wanda team to make Fierce Creatures, about a local zoo taken over by a multinational corporation. The film was shot on the back lot of Pinewood, where they constructed a fully working zoo, complete with tigers, ring-tailed monkeys and meerkats. We went along to find out why there had been such a gap since the first film and how the acting team had fared in the intervening years. We've all aged, there's no question about that. But what's interesting, I mean genuinely, is that they've all got better. I mean, uh, Kevin's a bit of a marvel, really. He has his own way of working. He takes quite a lot of takes, but in the end, he gets to something that is probably better than anyone else that I can think of can do. And Jamie is an extraordinarily accomplished actress. She's quick. And Michael has just got funnier. I mean, he's, uh, it's a joy playing with him because we've been acting together for 30 years. So it's like sort of old tennis partners. We don't know what the other one's going to do. I came because John asked me to come back to do something again with them. It's a, it's a, uh, some form of a repertory company that I think he would like to have, which is nice since it doesn't happen a lot in the movies for people to be able to work together again. So, you know, it, 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 very rarely in repertory theater do you go, well, what part do I get? You usually just go, okay, well, we're doing another play, okay. And then you get there and you go, okay, well, what is it? He had an idea that two of the pythons had sort of passed from a few years ago, the idea of someone who ran a zoo that had a fierce animal policy. And that was the point of inspiration for the first third of the film. And then we embellished it. And we'd always say, well, you know, next year we're going to make a movie. But the script just proved much harder to get to than, than we anticipated, so hence the gap. John, the film seems to have been very much a collaborative process. Did the writing of the script reflect that? Yeah. Well, I was very proud that on Wonder, I think 23 people contributed to the script. And a very good example is two days ago, I needed one line at a particular moment. And I was talking about it in makeup in the morning. And Paul Engel, who's in charge of makeup, said, Well, how about saying? I said, Thank you. <laughs> Join the list on the script. Credits. So it's lovely to work like that. But I'm so, if you like, let me just take him on. You don't if you want to come see on, the let me just when have a... No. Here we go again. Stand by to shoot again, please. <clears throat> if it goes on the rampage, all stand very still and freeze, and it won't attack you. <laughs> what do we have here? Oh, it's an African spurred tortoise. I ask you, if it died, who would know? <laughs> Hello? Hello? My grandmother's grave is a bigger attraction. <laughs> but wait. It's not some non-entity tortoise now. It is Bruce Springsteen's tortoise! Because we had good advice from early on while we were still constructing the script, we were able to find out from Rona Brown, who's very expert in animals and movies, what we could reasonably expect out of animals. And by and large, what we've got is pretty good. In some cases, they've been trained to do things. In other cases, Rona will say, well, it's likely to do this if you wait long enough. We're going to try and grab the taper shot because he's getting cross. Are you there with him? He might splash into the water, right? Can everybody now be very still because apparently this is the most nervous animal in the world. Right, unload the animal. Stand by to shoot when the animal goes the other way. So, Jim, you come in, or whoever's coming in, and now prepare the panel to do the right run. Is it endangered? It deserves to be. Anything that ugly shouldn't be allowed to have sex. 
So, John, which animal have you enjoyed working with most of all? I, I've always been in love with ring-tailed lemurs. Ever since I was a, a kid at a school in Bristol, right across the road from Clifton Zoo. And I used to go to Clifton Zoo, and my favorite animal was this ring-tailed lemur. So I put it in the script early on, and fortunately, they're not only very, very handleable, they look fantastic on camera. Ah! And this is one of our four lemurs. And we've had to set up an animal enclave here to contain the animals when they're not filming, and also to um, make sure that they're nice and healthy and happy where they live. And uh, fish productions have been very good in supplying everything that these animals want. Relax, relax. It's very tense. <laughs> My favourite animal is the aardvark because aardvark never hurt anybody. But the sad postscript to that report is that the film has now been sneak previewed in America where the audience didn't like the less than upbeat ending. So even as I speak, John Cleese is filming a different, more audience friendly ending and I wish him luck.